Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I am going to tell you about this complicated looking Anit and automation but which is extremely simple and more than that it's very very valuable because this automation is a local multi-model automation which you can use to summarize or extract or do anything with local files and it doesn't matter if the files are PDF, images, CSV, XLS, anything. So you can just put those files in a folder without caring about the extension or the type of the file and the automation will automatically figure out the type of the file and pass the file to the correct local model which is Olama and then it will summarize everything from that PDF document image or an excel sheet or any other file that you want to dump inside this automation while retaining your privacy and confidentiality of the files because nothing leaves your device as everything that we are doing in this automation is via local LLM models via Olama and this is what makes this automation extremely privacy centric and hence extremely valuable for high stake tasks. So the first step to enter into this automation would be to download Olama, which you can download from olama.com and simply press this download button. And then you'll be able to download this simply by pressing this button, depending upon which OS you are using. Now, once you download this, the task is not complete because even though Olama is downloaded in your machine, we still have to download models or as we say, LLM models to make it work. And for that, you have to go here and then check which model you have to download. Now, one thing I have consistently seen people doing is they download, for example, DeepSeek model and they try to put an image and pass through DeepSeek. The problem is if I click here, you can see the input of every single DeepSeek model in Olama is text. So DeepSeek is not a multi-model LLM in Olama. Like it can do all the reasonings and complex tasks uh, which are comparable to OpenAI's O3 and Gemini 2.5 Pro but the limitation is that the only thing that it accepts is text. So in case you are using multi-model things, you have to use uh, a model that accepts all of them which is called multi-model. And for that, Gemma 3 is what takes both text and image as input and then if you want to use heavy reasoning for some files you can use DeepSeq for that particular file or files so you're not limited to use only one model you can download several models and assign which model will process what kind of file right so once you have downloaded Olama you will go here let's say I go to Gemma 3 and you have to download a Gemma 3 model inside your Olama for that you have to go to your terminal and you have to make a new tab and then if you simply type Olama, it will show you all the commands that Olama takes as an argument. So right here, you can see there's a pull argument that it takes. So you just have to type Olama and pull and just paste this as the model. As soon as you press enter, it will automatically run and download the whole 7.5 GB model of 32-bit context text window of Gemma 3. But for this tutorial, I'm using a multi-model LLM which is Gemma 3 and for this I have used the Gemma 3 4B model as my base LLM model here. So if I instead of pulling if I show you the models you see Gemma 3 4B which is this one is already inside my machine 3.3 GB and that is this one but this is a multi-model. So once this is done we can go back to our init and automation and then start with the automation. So the first thing that look the trigger would be a local file trigger right and this you can do easily as a local file trigger let, let me show you how to do it in a blank workspace so let's go back and let's click a workflow and here you have to press local file and then you have to choose on change involving a specific folder so in this way it can create a folder that in it and will continuously watch and as soon as any file is put inside that folder the automation will run right so this would be the first trigger that you have to do to make this automation work now let's get back to our automation so we go back here right so once our local file trigger is done now we have to read the file once that trigger is done so i'll create a read slash write files from the disk uh, node which you can just do like this search for read 
slash write and then you have to click on read files because we are reading whenever any change is detected on that local folder right so once this is done it will automatically read the file that has been added inside that folder since i told you it's a multi-model automation that i'm creating here so we have to have a switch node because here it can have any kind of file like a jpeg file an image file a pdf file an excel a csv or any file that you have in your workflow so we have to filter out and define what to do when the automation encounters a specific kind of file right so for that we have to add a switch node and for that just simply click on the plus button and search for switch node which is this one which is enabled right here in my workflow now this is where you have to do all the settings so the setting i have done is if the file name of this file contains dot jpg it will go to an output which i have named as jpg which you can see right here right similarly if the file name contains png it will go to a png node if it has a pdf it will go to a pdf node xls xls and csv csv Everything is customizable, but I have named it so that I can remember which node corresponds to which type of file. Now, logically, JPEG and PNG are the same kind of files because both are image files. So we can route both of them to a single AI agent node, right? And for that, you can just have an AI agent node like this, right? This is a blank AI agent node and you can simply take this and put it inside the input of AI agent. So that is the exact way I have made all the three AI agents. I'll explain it one by one. So this AI agent has input of just the image type of files. So here I have given it a prompt that you can figure out what's in the image, right? And for that, I have added a chat model inside which I have added my Olama account and I have used the model Gemma. So if the input is either a JPEG or a PNG, it will directly go to this AI agent. Now, if the input is PDF, what I have done is I have added a node, which is a native init end node, which will extract information from the PDF in a text format, which will then be sent to this agent, which is a separate agent from this one, which has a system prompt of only summarizing this text, which this node has extracted from this PDF, which came from this file. So, you know, everything is connected. So, once the extraction is done from PDF, then this agent will use, again, the local Olama model, which is Gemma 3, to summarize whatever is the context of that PDF document. So, that you don't have to read everything, but it will summarize whatever is present inside that document for you to have a bird's eye look on that, right? Now, if the file is of XLS or CSV format, it is going to extract xls and csv individually because i have put in extraction nodes of both separately but then both of these will go to the same ai agent here for which the system prompt is write a summary of the file containing this data right and again the chat model i'm using is local olama gemma 4v and everything will come to this single output processing which is convert to file so whatever the summary is it's going to convert it to a text file and then it will and then it's going to create a file inside the same folder with the name summary.txt so this convert to file is a native node from nadn which you can just see from here just search for convert to file and you can convert it to anything like you can convert it to html json rtf ods xls whatever but for my workflow i have converted it to a text file and then once this text file is converted i also have to save it somewhere so that i can have a local reference for that particular file so this is what finally makes it to a text file with the name summary you can also change this name to correspond the file name from wherever the text has come i'll also share you one more iteration of this automation where we can have an external airtable link so that it can tell us what the file was and what the summary was and still retain all our data inside our local machine, right? So once this is done, let's just quickly test how it works. So let's execute this and let's go to my NHN uh, folder. So here I have a simple readme file, which was a download receipt from something I downloaded from VideoHive. So this is a simple kind of uh, PDF that 
I might have multiple if I am doing a lot of purchasing of things or media from any website or any other use case. So, right now, it's trying to figure out what changes are being done in this folder. So, since I have not made any change, it's not running right now. But let me put it side by side to show you how things happen. As soon as I rename this file, it's going to automatically run and route everything according to what file it is. Since we have a PDF file, it's going to go to this route and it's going to get extracted on this node, get summarized in this node. A file will be created here and a text file will be created inside this folder. So let's rename this file. Let me just rename it like here. And then you see the automation is running. It has extracted the PDF contents from here. The AI agent is running. Everything is running locally. And a file is here. And if I click the summary, this is a thank you email from this seller following a purchase and creating recipient to rate the project, blah, blah, blah. So you see, all this has been summarized in one click using this automation, right? Now, let me show you one more thing. So this was an invoice from Google for my business Gmail. So if I delete this summary here and I run this workflow once again, and I'm going to just rename this to something else. It's going to go again and gets extracted from here. And it's going to get summarized in the AI agent using Gemma 3 or locally. And it's going to have a summary, which is the invoice number, invoice date, invoice amount, description, all of that. So instead of having to read all of that, we can just read a summary like this. Okay, now let's see the multi-model capability of this automation. So like I said, it can have any kind of document and then it will intelligently figure out how to route and how to do things with that document type. So for that, let us let me just download like a cat file from here and let me execute this workflow and I put that file right here and let's see how the workflow executes. So as soon as I put here, it should run right here. And now it has routed itself to the image node because that was the file type. And it should read and figure out what's in the image and it should convert it to a text file. And the text file should be coming here in about a second. Right, so we have the summary text right here. This image shows a cute fluffy gray and white cat looking directly at the camera. It has striking green and gold eyes. That's, that's something I even haven't noticed. Right, so green and golden eyes, which is a fluffy cat, all of that. Right, so everything just happened inside your machine using Olama models. And you can have the summary of multi-model files. Just put it inside one folder and it will do its job. Now, one more thing I can show you right here is you can have an Airtable module that looks like this which can have a file path and the file name and the notes or we can say summary of whatever you have put inside this folder so that you can have a document online which doesn't have the data but only have the summary of whatever documents you have on your local machine. That will make it easier for you to share the summary or the metadata of the file with any of your associate or your team members. So for that, let me copy this whole automation in a new workflow and let me and let me remove this one and also this one and here I can just have like an Airtable connection which I will use as create or update a record and this is super simple you can just have an access token using Airtable's API docs right and here I'll select this one what I have created a local file processor and from table table one and here I will for the ID I, I'll use the file path because file path is going to be unique for every single file, right? And for these, this is not going to run right now because for that, I have to run this automation at least once. So let's try to do it once. Let's execute this and let's rename this to something else. And now it's going to just read the document and give me something, right? So now there's an error. But that's fine because we have to we have to map these things with our file data, right? So for here, we have to go to for the summary, we have to go here. File paths, we have to go like this. 
right? And for file name, we'll put this one right here, right? So now if I execute, this is the blank AI table right now. Let me delete all the columns from here. And as soon as I press execute, it should be entering. Yes, so it should be entering everything like that. So we have a file path so that we can remember where this file was. We have a file name and we have a summary like what is what was this document about, right? Similarly, I can also connect this node to this one and this node to this one, right? Now, if I save this and I execute this workflow and then I'll just paste that cat image once again, it's immediately executed and it's going to the local model to figure out what the image was. And once it is done, it should send all the information to this AI table instead of having it in an offline summary text file. And let me just have it side by side. Yep. So now it's doing everything. And now you see on the left, it, it shows that what the name was, what the file path was. This was the file path. This was the file name. And that summary is this one. So by using this automation, you can dump everything in like a folder and it will automatically create a summary document either online using Airtable or offline in the same folder using any logic that you can define. So I hope this was useful for people who are very privacy concerned and who don't want to put their data outside on the cloud. And that's all for today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you sometime in the next one.